Hello everybody, AJ Rizek here, and today we're taking a look at Quipzilla version 2.0. Now, I looked at this browser, oh, last year, 2015, I think in early May. Pretty good browser. I think back at that point they were on version 1.8, 1.7, something like that. And it was pretty good. Not quite as fast as, say, Chrome or Chromium and, and Firefox, but it was a pretty good browser. Uh, pretty lightweight compared to compared to uh, especially compared to Chrome anyway uh, there have been some big changes in the past few months uh, once we hit version 2.0 they switched to a different rendering engine and uh, let me just go to the page talks a little bit about that uh, let's see and this is right from their blog when 2.0 was released new major version of quipzilla also brings great changes biggest change is the switch of rendering engine from old and unmaintained qt web kit to shiny new qt web engine qt web engine is using uh, chromium to render web pages bring much better compatibility with web pages and also greater stability and I'm going to add to it. It's it's fast. It's just as fast as as using Chrome or Chromium. Um, so essentially, what we've got now in in this uh, in this release is we now have a Qt version of Chromium without all of the extensions that come along with Chrome slash Chromium. You do have some extensions to add some extra functionality. Um, but I think they've got they, they've got the basics built into it. There's a few extensions that you can turn on, turn off, and uh, I think for most people, this is going to cover all your bases. Now, if you're somebody that really tricks the heck out of out of Firefox or, or Chrome, and you know you've got nine million extensions running, this is not going to be for you. However, if you're just using you know if you're using this as a browser and you know you go to you know your various sites and whatever um, don't have a whole lot of tools that are embedded in the web browser that you're using this is probably going to be a good uh, good web browser for you so looking over our interface here you can see across the top we've got our various tabs and just like in in a lot of different browsers you can move the tabs around and if you go and right click on a tab you can go and you know, you get the option to reload, duplicate, detach it, tin the, pin the tab, you know, all kinds of different stuff as far as managing the tabs. If you want to open a new tab, just click on the little plus button at the end. And I've just started putting some stuff into the speed dial. Um, but uh, they got a real nice speed dial feature here. You can add, you know, your own custom setup. So, uh, you know, Pick out the web pages that you go to most often, add them here in the speed dial, and, and boom, you can get to them real quick. Um, so we've got the tabs across the top, and then within our, you can uh, do a search either through your address bar here or come over to the search. I've got Google set up as my default search, but if you click the down, you can see you've got all kinds of, of other searches available. You can add some other search engines if you like, um, and then believe Beneath that, yeah, beneath that, we've got all of our bookmarks. Uh, there are a couple that were set up for me to by default. Um, you can also go and import bookmarks from uh, from other browsers. I imported all the ones that I had on Chrome. Um, had to do a little bit of playing with them to get them organized the way that I wanted. Um, I will tell you the one thing that I didn't like on as far as the um, the bookmarking. As far as the bookmark bar right here, if you go and over and and put in more than what uh, um, what your display is capable of showing, you know, on Chrome, when you would get to the end of that space, you would just get a little drop down arrow. You click that, and you get a drop down menu with the rest. Um, Quipzilla tries to compress them all and fit them all into that into that uh, bookmarks bar so it, it essentially makes them if you got enough it makes them all unreadable so um, I did have a lot on my bookmarks bar so I had to do a little little reorganization but uh, um, I don't know that was probably a good thing for me got all those bookmarks organized and I did a little house cleaning got rid of a bunch of old ones that I really don't go to anymore 
Over here on the right hand side, what looks like a little page, if you click that, you get a drop down menu and uh, you got an open file, private window. Some, most of this stuff is pretty typical stuff. I like this one here, the send link. If you click that, uh, whatever web page you happen to be on, it will uh, it'll send that link uh, via email. Um, in my case, you know, since I've got Firefox insta uh, installed, uh, I clicked the send link. It opened up Firefox, set up the uh, the email for me. All I needed to do was add in a uh, uh, you know who I'm sending it to, and and then anything extra that I wanted to add it in the body of the message. So, pretty nice feature right there. Um, and a lot of this is, is pretty self-explanatory, you know, show your history, organize your bookmarks, um, your preferences, um, how you want to view everything, toolbar, sidebars, all that kind of stuff. Um, history, and then here you can see all, all the bookmarks, and you see all this stuff right here is what I imported from Chrome. Um, and then on down to tools, you can you can go and play around with how your downloads work, cookie manager, web search, all kinds of settings that you can play around in here. Um, let me back up the preferences. We'll take a look at that. And we'll just start up at the top there. Um, general things as far as how do you want to how do you want to launch I like having this restore session so the last page that you were on when you closed up the browser that's where it's going to start uh, or if you had several tabs open it'll it'll start all those I mean you've got different options here you can see open a speed dial open on the home page blank page however you want to go with that um, so like I said a bunch of options there um, what your default language that sort of thing appearance I just left it as default, but you can see you got some some options here. You got some advanced options here as far as uh, showing the bookmark toolbar on start. You know all kinds of different uh, settings. Uh, how you want your ta tabs to behave, browsing behavior, proxy configuration, um, fonts. I've got mine set to the default of what my uh, uh, of what the rest of my desktop is set at. Uh, shortcuts, download manager, uh, password manager, um, management as far as cookies, JavaScript, uh, all that privacy stuff, notifications, and then on down to extensions. And uh, from what I was I was trying to look and see if there were other extensions available, and I could not see if there were any. So it looks like everything that is available. Um, uh, was already preloaded on this for me um, and the ones that I've set up uh, this uh, auto scroll flash cookie manager tab management um, and what else did I do I think that was it yeah those were the only ones that I set up and then I could just the other is just kind of a catch-all for everything that's left as far as speed and rendering go, everything worked great. No issues. Uh, you know, uh, your videos, online videos played. Uh, you can see I got one of my old YouTube videos playing right now. Um, you know, that worked fine. I didn't have any rendering issues on any page that I went to. Um, you know, I went to a lot of graphically intensive pages. No issues with as far as rendering goes. Um, and as far as search goes, you know, it, it went quick. Let's just go search for LibreOffice. You know, boom, everything worked fast. Um, you know, just as fast as, as say Chromium, or you know, probably even even faster than say Firefox, which I find to be a little bit slower than than uh, uh, the Chromium browser. Um, as far as resource usage, it's it's not super lightweight. Um, let me take a look. I got K system activity open here, and let me find. There's Quipzilla. Um, detailed memory information. So you're running. We're running just under 200 megs of RAM, and that is with one, two, three, four, four browser windows open. Um, 
you know that that's pretty good um, like I said it's not super lightweight there's there's some others out there that are lighter like uh, uh, Midori is is lighter and and uh, there's a few others but as far as having a full featured browser um, this is this is pretty light and and for having you know that many tabs open uh, that's that's very light uh, just as a comparison um, Chrome is going to look at uh, I think around 400 to, to 500 megs of RAM um, so it's a lot heavier and then as you open more tabs on Chrome I mean the memory you start stacking up um, it, it's it's nothing to get up to 4 gigs of RAM being used by Chrome now remember that this is a Qt application okay so if you are in a GTK environment it this uh, this browser may not work as well as it's working here I am running OpenSUSE tumbleweed uh, KDE plasma so you know this is the right environment for for running this application um, having said that one of the things that I have noticed with Chrome in the past is that it doesn't always play nice with KDE desktops. Um, I've had some issues with it in Kubuntu. I've had some issues with it in in um, OpenSUSE, uh, some other KDE, um, KDE Manjaro when I've installed it there. It it um, you know it'll be running fine and then all of a sudden say I would bring my mouse up to hover over this open SUS and uh, you know where I'm holding the mouse is not exactly where it thinks that the mouse is supposed to be you know so to to hover over this open SUS I'd actually have to move my mouse like down here um, and it'll do this randomly uh, and and I've seen that on multiple KDE desktops with Chrome, um, and and you know all I can figure and I've and I've looked online trying to find a solution for it and I've seen other people that have had this issue, and uh, all I can figure it is a uh, incompatibility with Qt. So having said all that. Um, you know you have a native Qt browser here that does pretty much anything you'll throw at it uh, the only place that we are lacking is the 9 million extensions that you can get with Firefox and Chrome if you don't need those uh, this is going to be a great browser for you now one little sticky point with Quipzilla 2.0 is getting it and you know, if you go to the website, you can and go to their downloads page. You will see that a lot of the downloads through the page are older versions of 1.87 and 1.89 stuff like that, not the 2.0. And and actually, it's on 2.0.1 now. But um, so I was kind of doing a little research on it, and when I came to this uh, this web post here. He talked about um, uh, the developers of Quipzilla are no longer uh, uh, preparing the uh, the packages for various distributions. They you know do the research and all that, develop it, provide the source code, but it is up to the individual distributions to go and uh, and create the packages for their particular distribution. So. If you are on a distribution that does not have a recent version available, you are going to need to um, you're going to, need to build it from source. Kind of the sticky point of that is kind of right here. Quipzilla now depends on Qt version 5.6 to be able to use all Qt web engine features. Okay, a lot of distributions, especially LTSs, do not have that. Um, just as an example, um, you know, I'm on I'm on OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. Was able to download 2.0, no problem. When over on OpenSUSE Leap, which is their their version of an LTS, uh, it was Quipzilla 1.0. I think it was 1.87 is what was in 
uh, the repositories. So I was going to build it on my own, except that this little sticking point right here, the QT version. I had QT version 5.5, um, and it requires at least 5.6. So, you know, for me to build it on, on um, OpenSUSE Leap, it would have required me to upgrade the QT, you know, which, you know, yeah, that's possible to go and do and whatnot, but depending on your distribution, you may not want to go through that. Now, you know, a lot of distributions, they're going to have the latest version of QT, so it's not going to be a big deal, uh, especially if you're on a rolling release like Arch, any of the Arch-based distributions, you're going to have no trouble there. Um, Gen 2 is probably going to be the same way. Um, if you're going to try to build this on, say, uh, Ubuntu 14.04, it's probably not going to happen. So, you know, I don't, I don't know if you want to call, consider it a downside. You know, on the plus side, they are using the latest QT, so you know, kind of the latest technology, that sort of thing. So, you know, that's a good thing. Unfortunately, for some people, that's going to limit whether they can use this or not. Well, that just about finishes this review up. Hope you found it informative. It helps you out. Uh, if you've got any questions, comments, all that kind of stuff, leave it down below. I will try to get to it as soon as possible. If you are not a subscriber, please subscribe. Please share the video on social media. Get all your friends to check it out. I can use all the viewers I can get. And uh, I hope to see you all on my next video. Thanks a lot.